would be something like this. And this shape comes from when you screw this one up with a gouge. <laughs> okay, so you need a little bit more room to concave, but the shape is the same. The next option would be this shape. Basically, it's taking this, flipping it upside down, and putting a flare top on it. All we're trying to do is start out with some basic shapes, and you're going to see it at, uh, oh, I didn't bring those drawings in. It's when I start out a project, I draw several different sizes of this, and I doodle, just to get an idea of what I want to do with this thing. And it's basically is one will follow the next from one screw up to the next. <laughs> That's how I look at it. It's re redesign opportunities. But we're also going to be talking about texturing with burrs, with using your Dremel tool, Fordham, uh, the high speed things. But we're also going to be talking about uh, contouring and texturing. So what I'll do is pass this uh, plate around. That is a uh, simple thing, and all we did was contour the surface of it so we did interfere with the uh, grain of it, but the, how the light hits it gives it a different reflection. Now we're going to get into, here's another thing, a figured maple. This is done with texture. Now what I'm going to be working with primarily are three types of burrs, an eighth inch sphere, a 3 16th sphere and a dovetail, small dovetail. And that's the dovetail is basically so I can follow a line and get a nice clean sharp edge. But if you don't have one, you can still use like an eighth inch round sphere to follow that shape. We'll pass that around. Again, here's, a, here's another <laughs> plate. Basically, uh, I look at it, all of this is textured. But if you take a fine look at it or hold it up to the light, you'll see that I had bored little holes out of it so it reflects like almost like a starlight back. But we also then carved three feet on it using burrs so that we can create, uh, and this is basically the part that the chuck holds onto. Yeah. So once you remove it, you line it up and you carve away, three legs, four legs, it doesn't work too well with two legs. <laughs> Again, different types of burrs. Uh, design is, this was a leaf bowl. I wanted to, to give the leaves a little bit more of a flow, uh, more of what it would really look like on a tree. So basically, you turn the bowl to give this basic shape, you draw on your leaf pattern or whatever you want to do, and then you just start carving it out, showing the veins of the leaves. I pierced holes in it. Uh, as if the veins were left there and the leaf part was gone. Um, it, everything I'm trying to do is just to push the basic bowl to the next level, trying to give it a little bit more visual impact. Um, like this little base, little bud base here. It's all uh, textured with, a, again, a 3 16th burr, round burr. Pierce this little section here. Now, most people think this was part of the design. Well, no, I screwed up. So I opened it up a little bit more so that it actually makes you want to look inside the vessel. And what I did with the top of this, we pierced the, the top, but I also put a little ebony finial in there with a mother of pearl. So that when this is down, you're looking into a dark void. But what's going to catch your eye is the pearl. And it's just bringing another dimension to the visual aspect of your turning. Uh, last month, I brought in this little bowl. Again, it is just contouring the back side of it to give the bowl a little bit more shape. Same with this. Again, just two burrs, uh, three burrs. A uh, simple pattern, and it's just opening up your imagination to play with it. You really can't go wrong. Um, but again, same with this. Uh, I even carved uh, the little tulip on top of it. But it's 
Just a bowl, nothing fancy about it, just the outside to add texture. This time with the three legs, I connected them. So it looks like, I don't know what it looks like. <laughs> it's like it's like connected connect. legs. But it looks like they're connected now. And I don't know, how many people have a Sorby Micro Sandmaster? One person, two. They're a fabulous tool for doing inside tall vessels. You can get in here with a light and just keep it nice and smooth so you can do a finished uh, detailing inside. Now, I've modified this tool. One, I uh, created a six inch extension to get in taller vessels, and I modified the head so that it's smaller so I can get in tighter areas. I didn't catch what you said you did to make those three little legs on the first piece of that well, this is all part of the chuck that's in the chuck part. The tenons. Yeah. The tenon. So once you remove it, then you have all this extra material to play with. So you're just carving I'm just carving the away. The yep. I'm making use of it. Instead of cutting it off. Now this is a fun little piece. Uh, basically it's just a stick of uh, vase. But again, it's to show that uh, you're taking a standard little thing. I created just a little band around it. Again, we're always looking at when we're designing something, keep in mind the balance of the piece, which is your one-third, two-third ratio. Whether it's up, two-thirds here, one-third up here, flip it up, it doesn't matter. But also take a look at the design of it. You need to still keep that in proportion with the whole thing. You never divide it in half. You move it up, move it down, cross over, whatever. <coughs> uh, this texture here was done with two different burrs, uh, an eighth inch, and it's a lot of stepping. Then I finished it. Then I noticed that I missed some areas, so I took an eighth inch uh, burr and we went in between and then finished that. So I get almost like a popcorn effect visually. And this is all done with uh, a 3 16th burr. And then you just glaze over it. <coughs> you keep mentioning a burr. Are these round burrs? Round burrs, yeah. We're going to be talking primarily 8th uh, inch and 3 16th spheres. Now, uh, if you don't have any, <coughs> go to Treeline USA. They're the sister company to Craft Supply. Uh, I only recommend them simply because they have a variety of different sized burrs. Craft Supplies doesn't do, have it. Uh, and you can have more fun with it. Okay. I'm, the plate. How did you do the... Uh, the plate. Uh, that, that was much different. Basically, this is the part that comes off the Sandmaster. The little Sandmaster. You put a little one inch sand pad on it. And all I did was... Basically, I took my plate, I took circles, and drew them in there roughly, and then I just went in there and slowly just sanded them out just to give them a little bit of a divot. That was it. A lot of this is not that technical. Uh, it's just, actually, I spend more time turning these things than I do on the texturing part of it. But what we're going to do is we're going to start with this one. Something that's simpler. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with... A dovetail. Uh, are you, is everyone familiar with what a dovetail is? Dovetail bird. Uh, <coughs> basically, a dovetail bird is this. This is your, your cutting on it. It's a crisscross uh, burr. There is no cutting surface on the top part and then the shaft. And I'm using eighth inch shafts for everything. Or does that explain everything? The cutting's only on the sides. Only on the sides. And what this, what this will do, it allows us to, once we put our drawing on this thing here, then we can clean up and go follow that edge right along the way. Now, when, you're, when I design, I basically give myself room for oops. I'm a big fan of oops and redesign it, <laughs> because I'm very good at oops. <laughs> okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now, what the dovetail does also, because of the angle of it, if you're going to do, like in this pattern here, I'm following the two <coughs> inside lines. This will give the center section more of a hump, adding again another element of shape. So that when you do the texture, you'll, stop, you'll see how things move around. You ever just wing it or you always draw? I always, I always draw. I draw on paper first, then I transfer. If I like it on paper, then I put it on the piece itself. And then I'll play with it I, if it works for the shape. Did I cover the one-third, two-third rule? Is there a flow? Because you have to look at a piece of how does it flow? Is there balance to the piece? It's always in the eye of the beholder, but when you go online, go to Google, click on vessels or vases, and just take a look at what other artisans have done, and you'll start uh, taking a, a appreciation for how do the, their perspective, how do they see it, and basically then you start learning from them, but you then apply it to what you want to create. design is something that's a little bit more organic, you have room to play with it. Nothing always has to be dead on precision. How many RPMs are you using? Uh, it varies depending on my, roughly if I'm so focused I'm not paying attention to my foot pressure. Roughly though? I have no idea. No? I just, uh, it just goes. I think this thing goes up to 1800. Okay. Now I do take light passes until I develop a path for the bird to follow. <clears throat> well there's two no, lines no. because I'm going to create something here. How much of the um, burr are you using? Oh. Just the, uh, uh, well, the full circumference of it. Just no, the full circumference. <laughs> <laughs> so tiny. So tiny. No, no. I'm using this part right here. That's about this. Until I want to, until I create the line. And basically, what I'm doing here is here's the circumference. All I'm doing is taking this burr and cutting in to follow my line right here. Uh -huh. And then if I want to create more of a dome, I will then cover up more of this area to give me more of this. And the deeper <clears throat> I go, the more contour. Because then what we're going to end up doing, or what you can do is push the design a little bit further, is uh, you can uh, get a burr that's more like a tree, uh, like I think they call it a Christmas tree. It's more pointed. 
He goes, then what you're going to do with this point, you're going to then cut into this area even more. So now you're creating a reveal to that. Um, any questions at this point? Okay. What type of material burrs do you use? These are all uh, carbide, uh, multi-cut uh, burrs. They're crisscross for the cut. Scott, like on this, uh, do you hollow this out after you texture it? or? No. I, I, all I did uh, for a stick base is just a three-quarter inch. Uh, and you leave it that way? Yep. Okay. That's it. Uh, the other one is I did hollow it out a little bit on the other sample. That's because if you look at the drawing, there's a little V at the top. I'm going to remove that so that we're trying to create, uh, I'm going to realign that top from being a kind of an odd shape to more roundish so that it will follow around and then cut back into that opening. Like a lily Yep. <laughs> So when you're turning your vessel, you do want to make sure that you give yourself enough material to play with. And I found a good rule as anywhere from quarter to five sixteenths of an inch thick wall. Now unless your design requires you to bore more, then go as so much as three eighths. chose this because one, these are bat pellets. Basically it's blank bat material. Uh, you get them in I think 37 inches long and you can get five pieces uh, roughly seven and a quarter inches long. Where do you get those? You can get them at Rockler. Uh, you can get them at Woodcraft or any places like that. But it allows you, to, uh, if you wanted to put the, the glass vials in there to make them like single bud bases, then you'll probably need to go to like a 13 16 bore bit because I think the glass vials are three quarters of an inch and they're about five and three quarters or six inches long. So that you can, once you bore it, you can just drop them in. Now what I'm doing here is basically there's a double line here and I'm working on the other side of the double line is I'm just going to try and create a little bead, a little rounded bead of this little uh, flap, I guess. I have, don't worry, don't get me hung up on technical terms because I don't know them. <laughs> the positive space rather than the negative. <laughs> Sounds good, I'll go with that.
in the black hole. Right. Change this up. Sorby Micro Sandmaster. That rock. You can, you can get it at Rockford. Or you can get it at Craft Supply. How, how did you add the extension? I made it. Yeah, but where does it add on? Or is, that, is that the extended version? No. Yeah. Yes. Oh. I created a oh, steel and I took some Velcro. Uh, I'm, yeah, Velcro. Wrap it around this part so that when it, uh, if it would hit the edge of the bowl, Scratch it wouldn't add, damage it. Uh, but I've blown things up and I've modified the head. This is your standard head. 
that fits it. And I made a couple uh, smaller heads to get into smaller, tighter uh, openings. So that if you did an uh, opening, say about an inch and a quarter, you can gently get this inside and do it. So do you sand while it's spinning? Oh yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> well let's put it this way. Uh, when I was creating this base here, uh, Hunter makes a Halloween tool that is slightly curved. Uh, so I did, I used that to hollow this out, but I couldn't sand it because it's, the hole's big enough, people are going to put their finger in it. So what I did was, uh, how many of you guys had that uh, canvas finger thing that goes over your, over your finger and thumb? Okay, I took uh, Velcro and glued it on the tip of it so that I could take my little one inch sanding pads and put it on the fingertip <laughs> so I can reach in. But because this hole is small, I took the Hunter uh, uh, hollowing tool, taped on the leather strapping on to follow the shape of that so that I can go inside <laughs> and not lose a finger. <laughs> Very clever. Yes. So, did you see the sander? Okay, oh. did you see the sander? Oh, here. Yeah. You, want, you want to pass oh, yeah. it? Yeah. You want to pass it around? And I'm not really concerned with following a line, shortening it, uh, because it's just to get the basic format down. And then I'll go back through and even deepen some areas more than others. As you can see, like on that, you do all the cast that around. Uh, maybe an hour. It took, it took me longer to turn the thing. Well, what I ended up doing with that piece is after I got it all textured, I sanded it, I put a black blaze on it, let it dry, and then uh, put it back in the machine and sanded it by hand so that uh, the lighter color is up to the color of the wood. It, it is a UTC color. It's a, it's a clay base uh, paint thinner. No, it's uh, oil based. Let me finish the piece. Let me finish the piece. Lacquer. It just, because it's, for me it's just simple. Let me just take. Anyways, just send that around. That kind of just gives you the gist of it. But it's, it's one, once you do a rough cut of it, then you go back over it and take a closer look. And that, uh, where's that little plate, the little star plate? Practice the little maple one? Practice on a, uh, oh, on a slab. Right. Basically, I started out with the 3 sixteenths. And then I kept going a little deeper. Then I went to an eighth inch uh, burr, then to go all the way through. That's all I did to it. Uh, because I look at it this way, I'm still learning a hell of a lot. To me, there's no right or wrong. 
if I screw up, I redesign it. <laughs> Actually, Carrie, uh, two Christmases ago, Carrie, do you still have that little uh, flame ball that I did, that you bought at Christmas? Oh yeah, everybody tells me how pretty that is. I thought, yeah, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you better get this. I admit that I bought it. <laughs> well, that took. It started out very similar to this, but as I was hollowing it out, it blew up the neck. And as I was hollering out anymore, it blew it up even more. <laughs> so I had basically a half a vessel left over. And I said, well, now that it's big enough and open enough, enough I could go in there, sand it nice and neat. And then I uh, pierced it to create something else with it. Otherwise, it's just throwaway material. And, that's right. So pass that around. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Did I explain anything well enough? Yeah. 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 Uh, this grinder, you use it in uh, normal because of weight, because of foot control? I do for foot speed. control because uh, the other half bought it for me for Christmas. <laughs> How, how's your kick welding with the foot control? I like the foot control. Yeah. Uh, but again, sometimes I get so focused on what I'm doing, I'm not paying attention to the speed. <laughs> So, uh, I just like it because I can get smaller little handsets that makes it very comfortable, like a very large pen. And they even have them thinner than this, but I don't know if they're uh, designed well enough for the beading that I would do with it with a burr and going into different types of materials. Have you ever tried the desert style? Uh, the high speed ones? I do have drill bits for, for dental tools that I use in my Fordham. Little small uh, uh, bits for drilling teeth. Uh, I don't have one of those. But I do have an air grinder that can get up to, I think, 25 or 30,000 RPMs that I can hook up to my compressor. So, uh, the problem with those little NSKs, though, is that your, your stuff has to be really thin because it only takes little bits at a time. It doesn't hog out stuff like this. Yeah. So you got to go to something different. You're at Ben Fold level. I, yeah. I, just, I bought one of those NSKs because I was going to be able to do stuff like this. No, I'd probably go with the burrs because you can get into it, but uh, keep your mind that you're designed has to have a little bit more of a flow to it, a little give and take to it, so you plan for oops. Because even with this one, uh, with it's a hard rock maple, even though it's carbide, it still can move on you. So you, after you do your main cut, then you may have to go back with sandpaper just to smooth out that edge and clean it all up. But uh, any other questions? Yeah. Is that a Fordham? It is a Fordham. And what's the horsepower? I think it's one third. Uh, um, I'd rather spend the money for, the, for it being US made than China. Mm -hmm. Because that's like buying tools at Harbor Freight. Yeah. <laughs> some of them are okay and some of them are not. Now, each, now, I don't buy a set of carbide burrs. I buy individual because I never know what I need. And I don't want a bunch of burrs that I never use or need. Uh, but I found that over a period of time, I will start with 3 16 and go smaller. Because when you have a crossover, you want to be able to get into smaller, little tighter corners. Now, in the bigger, uh, like, you have a Christmas tree, shaped like that. Then you have ones that are shaped like a football. That's a little bit more rounded. Again, and pointy. So again, it's all about the contour. Can you get this, or do you need something that's more sharp to get deeper into tighter control? To create more reveal in things. Um, that's why I'm hoping with next month's uh, challenge, take a look at how many of you have Dremel tools? 
Okay. How many have carbide burrs? Probably. Okay. High speed burrs will probably work fine if you're working with softer woods. Uh, but I'm looking at the, maybe that the next month's challenge is more on shape, on texturing with burrs or sanders so that you can either add a contour or something like that as opposed to painted surfaces. And this is just trying to push you outside of your normal box of comfort and just play with it. If you're going to turn a base, make two. <laughs> yeah, oh, well that's because it spins around. What's great about this, in case you never have it, is that how many of you take a sandpaper and as you sanding, it leaves very fine lines in it. This head spins and rotates as your uh, piece is turning, this is spinning, so therefore it's taking out all those scratches. So that you don't have to go from 80 to 4,000, hmm. you, can, you can get that down to 400 if you want to, or then you can get to the point where you're just using like either a burgundy or a green 3M uh, pad and just use that to help polish the wood. What is that? What is that? This is a Sorby Micro uh, Sandmaster. Sandmaster. They didn't make it over here, so when you oh, put it down... Oh, uh, basically this, just this head is attached to the, head, to the handle. It's great for small bowls. But it's, if you're going to get into taller vessels, the extension is important. Did you weld it on there? Or no, it, there? it's on uh, set it with set screws. Do you want to hand it over there? Get on the other side. Yeah. Um, so again, like this thing, basically I took a sander, an orbital sander, and just sanded it at an angle. So it leaves you with this odd shape. So what I'm going to do is, with uh, my burrs and sanders, I'm going to basically turn this back round. Give, this has thickness here, this has no thickness, so I'm going to add some more thickness so that when this comes around, I'm going to cut that little V out so that you can see inside. So you're going to bring all those next week, right? No, no. no or next no. month. <laughs> no, I have something totally different <laughs> for the challenge. Does that answer? Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. Thank you.